Mills is the founder of one of the largest networks of churches rising out of Africa. Over the course of three decades, these denominations consist of thousands of churches spread across close to 100 nations in Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, North and South America. This is a story of how God used a man to raise up thousands of churches and pastors all over the world. The very first branch of the Lighthouse Chapel International was established neither in Ghana nor in a country close by, but in Geneva, Switzerland, Geneva is a Swiss city surrounded by the Alps and the Jura Mountains. It is a worldwide centre for diplomacy due to the presence of numerous international organisations, including the headquarters of many of the agencies of the United Nations and the Red Cross. The church in Geneva came about quite by accident. It was at the insistent request of Pastor Dag's sisters, who now lived in Geneva, and greatly missed the spiritual atmosphere they were used to in Accra. Pastor Dag set an important example by choosing to go himself to Geneva to start the first branch. In October 1992, Dag Hewitt Mills arrived in Geneva. He set out to recruit strong pillars with whom he would build the new branch. He reached out to his cousin who was then living and working in Belgium. Pastor Dag spent the rest of the week reaching out to family, friends and their acquaintances. The very first church service took place the following Sunday. Pastor Dag stayed in Geneva for several months building the church through prayer, witnessing and visiting new converts and members, no matter how far they lived. In the beginning of 1993, Pastor Dag finally returned to Ghana, leaving behind a vibrant and fledgling church in Geneva. He later paid several apostolic visits to this church to strengthen and encourage them. Even whilst he had barely started the first branch in Geneva, he was already envisioning starting another church in London. In January 1993, Pastor Dag sent a message to Richard Ayi, who was known as Brother Mighty and led the prayer ministry in the church in Accra. He began to share his vision with him about starting a church in the UK. In May 1993, Pastor Dag travelled to London to plant a church with the help of Richard Ayi and his fiancée Linda Hyde, who was already living in London. A few faithful individuals who had been members of the church back in Ghana also became pioneering members of this new church. Pastor Dag led this small group into a season of fasting and prayer, he held the first Sunday service in the apartment of Linda Hyde and her friend Elaine. Pastor Dag led the small group to find a more spacious meeting place in a school in Chalk Farm, London.
the group held their second church service in the newfound premises. They raised funds to buy their first keyboard and Pastor Dag returned to Ghana. Pastor Dag also called for reinforcement by sending E.A.T. Saki to help build the church and train the leaders. The church outgrew its space in Chalk Farm and moved to a community centre in Tustin Estate. The church then moved to an even larger hall in New Cross, London. In 2002, God gave the Lighthouse Chapel International the power to purchase a building in London. The church moved into this beautiful cathedral in February 2003. The third church Dykewood Mills personally planted was in Zurich, Switzerland. Charles Bannerman, a church member in Geneva, offered to put him up in his studio apartment located on the outskirts of Zurich so he could start the church. Reverend Dag arrived in Zurich on the 11th of September 1994 and immediately entered a period of fasting and prayer for the new church he was starting. He also rallied around church members and their acquaintances living in and around the city to join the church. Starting the church in Zurich turned out to be perhaps the most trying church planting experience for him. Whilst fasting, praying and building the church, he received a word from home that his father was sick and hospitalised. Before he was able to get help and hand over the work to go and see his father, he received word again that his father had passed away. Reverend Dag sent for E.A.T. Saki to come and continue the work in Zurich so he could return to Ghana and bury his father. Through many challenges, the church in Zurich became one of the active and fruitful branches in Switzerland. Hewitt Mills also set his sights on the United States of America when some faithful members from the First Church in Accra migrated to New York City. This would be the first lighthouse branch in North America. This apartment building located on 42nd Street in Midtown Manhattan became the venue for the first church service with a few church members now living in America. After setting the pace for the church to flourish, Reverend Dag sent for Eddie Addy, who came from Ghana to continue the church building effort. Pastor Eddie also handed over the work to Pastor Joel Obobisa. The repeated examples of church planting set by Bishop Dag Heward Mills over the years released faith that it is possible. Dag Heward Mills understood very early in his ministry that fruitfulness could not come without patiently training a workforce of loyal and dedicated people. Having never attended formal Bible school himself, he applied the wisdom of an informal and often casual style of training ordinary church members to become fruitful leaders. 
Jack Hewitt Mills recounts that one day, whilst walking on a hillside, he noticed the patch of land that had been cleared and cultivated. Thriving on it were some pine pools, and around it was uncultivated land filled with weeds and bushes. God showed him that to have a thriving church, he would need to make special investment in people through training and teaching in order to produce leaders. It is important to understand that you cannot have a church without a pastor. This means that the work of church planting is synonymous with training pastors. Beginning in the early 1990s, Pastor Dag frequently held small informal meetings with selected individuals. This form of training became known as the Informal Pastoral Training Program, or IPTP. Dagwood Mills has utilized some of the most unlikely places for holding small group meetings, including offices, under trees, on car parks and on road trips. A camp meeting is a special time when a section of the church goes away to a secluded place to wait on God and receive long hours of sustained teaching. Dykewood Mills discovered camp meetings as an effective method for training pastors. In 1993, Reverend Dagg started sending pastors he had been training to start branches in the major suburbs of Accra, including Teshi, Achimota, Adenta, Kaneshi and also Tema, which is outside the Accra metropolis. With the passing of time, several branches were planted in and around Accra. Will come 
Church planting in the city of Accra can probably best be seen in the yearly gathering of all lighthouse churches in and around the city on Good Friday. From 1992, Daikewood Mills sent pastors he had been training to the major cities in Ghana, including Kumasi, Takrade, and Tamale. He sent Kakra Baden to start a branch of the church in the city of Kumasi. It is the blessing of the Lord that make the rich and not your efforts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and build your house on a rock and the rains will come down. Reverend Dykewood Mills sent Pastor Hamish Odoi to Takradi in the western region of Ghana. Build your house on a rock, the winds will blow vehemently, but your house will stand strong. In August 1995, Reverend Dykewood Mills sent Pastor Patrick Bruce to Tamale in the north of Ghana.
Bishop Dag paid repeated and crucial visits to the churches no matter how far away they were to establish an atmosphere of encouragement and a deep sense of belonging. The work of church planting almost cost Dagwood Mills his life. One day he and four others had a terrible accident on a road trip to Tamale. They almost died. Undeterred, Dagwood Mills resolved to apply even more strength to the work of God. From the churches in Accra, Kumasi, Takrade and Tamale, many church planters would be trained and launch out to start churches in every corner of Ghana. Let's fight to save our 
Church, will you build my house? 
come, you stayed in your hometown. Was my message not clear? The strong drive to follow through every successful church planting effort with the construction or acquisition of a church building reinforces the idea of permanence. It also demonstrates the seriousness with which Bishop Dykewood Mills views this clear God-given assignment. He has endeavoured through various experiences to build a church everywhere in the world where a lighthouse chapel is present. This story of Dykewood Mills is one of faith in God and obedience to his unchanging command to go out into the lost and forgotten world and make disciples of all nations. It is a journey of faith that the mustard seed of gathering two or three will grow into a mighty army of souls. His journey has been marked by the belief that many are called and that ordinary people everywhere can be trained to become pastors of thousands. Dykewood Mills continues to express strong faith in God and in his promise in Jeremiah 30 verse 19 that I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Only God knows the extent to which this seed of obedient faith will grow. the glory.
The apostolic ministry of Dag Heward Mills is one that has borne much fruit across the world over the past three decades. The Bible says when Christ ascended up on high, he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. It also makes us understand that God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, and thirdly teachers and so on. The church is also built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The work of an apostle, broadly speaking, involves building foundations, fathering, government and judging. Dag Heward Mills, through planting and building foundations, birthing and fathering several ministers and wielding the authority of Christ to govern a network of thousands of churches has clearly demonstrated the apostolic call on his life. In this short program, we take you on a journey through the churches he has established across the world. Even though the Lighthouse denomination was born in Ghana, West Africa, it was not until 1997 that the denomination expanded into the rest of Africa. In 1997, Pastor Kingsley JC received a scholarship for postgraduate studies. Pastor Kingsley chose to study in South Africa so he could start churches in that country. Missionaries must enter with all their hearts Into the spirit of the mission Leave all the comforts of a life behind oh, Enjoy the hardship of the mission An uncomfortable manner of living As a farmer or a fisherman This is how to be a missionary oh, This is how to serve the Lord Historically, Pastor Chris Quinston Addo became the first full-time missionary when he was sent by Dag Heward Mills to Uganda in 1999. He was soon followed by Andy Juma, who was sent to Swaziland in the year... ...to learn the language of the natives Endeavour to cultivate Friendship with them oh, oh, oh. as soon as possible. Let them know the errand for which you came. Convince them that it was for their good alone. That you left the comfort of your native home. Oh, 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 oh,
of language barriers is a potential obstacle to church planting. However, this has never deterred Bishop Dag Heward Mill's vision to plant churches. Mozambique, for example, is a Portuguese-speaking country where several churches have been successfully planted. And this is how to serve the Lord. right next door to Ghana and a French-speaking country has also been touched with the work of sending missionaries and planting churches. you are seeing are a result of the ministry of an apostle. As you can see, the work of an apostle is crucial. The Bible places the apostle above the prophet and teacher. All these churches would not exist without an apostle. The gift. You've got to use the gift God gave to you. Come on and stir it up. Mm -hmm. The gift of God 
to visit an island like the Seychelles for a delightful holiday. Well, Apostle Dag Heward Mills' vision for the islands is not for relaxation, but rather to win souls and establish churches. Tell me what kind of vessel are you? Oh, you want to carry the anointing, then you must change your vessel and become a vessel of honor. Without the anointing, you cannot do very much. It is by the anointing you can build a mega church, you can preach, you can teach, and gather crowds. That's why I love the anointing. Whoa. As I listen to the word. The anointing fell on me. He said, I could teach, I could preach, and I could heal. Oh, 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 oh I believe, I received, I saw the power of God at work in me, and my whole life and me.
no one can say it's here or there but everyone can see the effect It is important to realize the fact that not every attempt at church planting has been immediately successful. In Kenya, for example, it took three separate attempts of sending full-time missionaries before the first church was successfully established in that country. See without this anointing, my brother, you cannot do very much. For it is by the anointing, you can build a mega church, you can preach, you can teach, you can heal. That's why you should love the anointing. Do you know who catches the anointing? It's a son or a daughter or a servant or a follower. Yeah, Elisha caught the anointing. After 20 years of church planting on the continent of Africa, there are about 400 churches scattered across close to 40 African countries. The missions in faraway Australia started in quite an amazing way. Pastor Peter Ensoa happened to be the only person to volunteer for missionary work after a camp meeting by Dag Heward Mills in London. He would arrive in February 2000 to start the pioneering work of planting a church in Australia. And without the anointing, you cannot do very much. For it's by the anointing, you can build a mega church, you can preach, you can teach and gather crowds That's why I love the anointing yeah. See, no one has seen the wind no one About six years later, missionaries would also be sent to Papua New Guinea and Fiji Seventeen years on, there are about 30 active and growing churches in Australia and Oceania When you see you begin to preach and teach and heal the sick. That is how the anointing is. The launch into the Caribbean started in September of 2003. Bishop Dag sent Reverend Robert Dodu from the church in Geneva, Switzerland to survey the land, duly considering where to start a church and how to start. A door opened in Trinidad and Tobago and Reverend Robert started the first branch in Trinidad early the following year. I just want to do his will My purpose is to serve the Lord With gladness and with joyful hands 
Planting a church in Trinidad and Tobago made it possible to eventually register the church also in Jamaica. The church in Trinidad served as the hub from where branches would spread all around the Caribbean. Somebody said to me, you're wasting your time when you go to church, you're wasting your life, you're missing all the fun you could have. How can you spend so much time in a church? Can't you find something better to do with your life? Church once a week, that's okay. But I love my Savior, I love my Jesus, that's why I serve Him so. I don't want to fail in my mission. I just want to do His will. My purpose is to serve the Lord with gladness and with joyfulness. And return you will see such a big difference between those who serve the Lord and those who serve Him not. Jesus is my first love. I love Him with zeal. I love Him with a passion. I love Him with all of my heart. I love Him with faith. I love Him with strength. I love Him because I'm fresh. I love Him like I'm crazy. That's how I show my first love. Oh, oh I love my Savior. I love my Jesus. He is my first love. I don't want to fail. I just want to do his will My purpose is to serve the Lord With gladness and with joyfulness In return you will see such a big difference Between those who serve the Lord And those who serve him not In 2009, India became the first Asian country to have a lighthouse church. Dag Heward Mill sent Peter Ensoa to India to pioneer the church in the country. I just want to do his will. My purpose is to serve the Lord with gladness and with joyfulness. In return, you will see such a big difference between A few years on and through the complementary effort of more missionaries, more churches have been planted in India. I don't want to miss my call to fulfill my ministry. No, 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 no. I'm responding to his love. I know what I just want to do His will My purpose is to serve the Lord With gladness and with joyfulness In return you will see such a big difference Between those who serve the Lord And those who serve Him not said to me you're wasting your time when you go to church you're wasting your life you're missing all the fun you could have how can you spend so much time in a church can't you find something there following the first branch in north america started by dag heward mills in new york several more branches were planted right across the united states Yeah. 
available to preach the word of God. Obligation of the Christian, witnessing to everyone. Conversion of the nations to the blood of Jesus Christ. In September 1998, Andy Lugutera, pastor of the Swiss Cottage Branch in the UK, relocated to Toronto, Canada. This presented an opportunity to start the first branch in Canada. The United Kingdom has the most lighthouse branches outside of Ghana. Ever since the first church in London was planted by Dag Heward Mills in 1993 with the help of Richard Ayi, the churches in the UK have grown by an average of more than five churches a year over the past 20 years. Dag Heward Mills has persistently employed the same methods of camp meetings to train several ordinary church members and turn them into good seeds to be planted right across Europe. From the first branches Dag Heward Mills pioneered himself in Geneva, Zurich and London, several branches have emerged across the nations in Europe. Must fight, must fight. 
The apostolic grace on Dag Heward Mills shows no signs of waning. Indeed, it is only growing and the fruits ever increasing. The weight of the burden to win the lost souls grows heavier. His vision of reaching 190 nations with 25,000 churches and 2,000 apostles and bishops continues to drive him to fulfill the master's main purpose on this earth, to save a lost and dying world. He certainly gave gifts to men. He saved you, he saved me.